hey Don here okay I'm back with my uh, application for ballot by mail 2016 and this is in Texas there's a SOS state text site that's where I'm getting doing mine at I want to make sure my uh, audio is working okay usually check that before I start but I forgot okay so I've already my previous video I already showed a bunch of pages and how I found out what to do and it takes a lot of different links and a lot of different reading to make sure you're doing it right but uh, to vote by uh, get the ballot by mail so you can vote by mail and you do that early to vote early by mail in Texas you must be 65 years or older disabled in other places it says disabled or ill or sick or whatever out of the country on election day or during the period of early voting person's appearance uh, find in jail but otherwise eligible to vote and so instructions for, for submitting the application or the ballot uh, I downloaded the PDF and I use uh, scan with virus total it's an add-on for Firefox to scan I scan everything I download because I don't care where you get it from, it could have been hacked and infected. You know how many times the government sites have been hacked the last couple of years. So, um, and I'm on Fedora 23 Linux. I don't even use Windows hardly at all. I don't do it for anything important, that's for sure, because of all the security issues and that, and I just like Linux better. Okay, so I'm not going to read over all of this. I've already done it, already filled out. Um, my application you can go to uh, this is the best page I found for, uh, for you know all information in one spot and I found it kind of spread out those um, every time I get my mouse near a menu uh, that's one thing I don't like a lot of sites are that way they those things jump out when you're not even trying to get them to come up and they just get in your way you have to send it to either mail it and I'm th this is where mine would go I'm in Tarrant County in Texas or you can click on this link and I've already done that and it will um, open up an email and uh, I went ahead and copied in that address too from I put went in and put my address in there again I told them what file I'm sending them and so I'm going to send it spell check and I'll send it and I use Thunderbird uh, email client have for years but whatever you use or if you do webmail you know it'll be different if, you know especially on, on Windows there's Thunderbird for Windows I used I've used it on Windows too any Windows machines I set up I put Thunderbird on there and uh, so that I don't like mail and stuff anyway anymore so that was it wasn't easier to be very honest uh, and this page, I didn't see it earlier. I found it in sort of a neat way. My uh, your phone, you know, I've got some. I'm using a phone to make a video over there. I have two of these Alcatel A45L phones. Um, they'll scan barcodes, and there's a barcode on the uh, on the front of of your. Uh, I'm gonna show it up close anyway. Uh, can't see it on the desktop video, but if I edit these two, I'm making two videos. If I add them together, then you'll see. There's a barcode, and I just happened to notice that and it said scan. Scan the barcode uh, with a smartphone and to visit the website, and that's the site it took me to. And I thought, well, that'd be great, except I can't read it on the phone. And I remembered, oh yeah, I have this little application on my computer that I was trying out KDE Connect that's a Linux application for the KDE desktop but it'll work on I'm on Mate desktop it works on there but uh, turn you can use it to do things uh, do several different things uh, you can't actually control oddly this one's kind of backwards from what I want to do anyway you can't control the phone with the computer that's what I like so you can see it on the screen but it you can control your media player and stuff from the phone which is cool but it, one thing it can do is send files and things and links but anyway what it did was I scanned it then I click it send to and I'd have to make a video and show it but anyway it actually sent the link to my web browser and my computer and opened it up <laughs> and so that was kinda cool so um, definitely I mean when you, you find things it's, sometimes it's easy to you can take a picture of stuff you can um, 
you can uh, and you know search for it in Google by taking a picture you can talk to your phone and uh, send files yeah okay well I'm not gonna do it right now but I, I, cause unless I can make a phone desktop video it won't make any sense I can, you can't see much if I could hold it up to the other camera but you wouldn't see very well I've tried that Anyway, you know, on, on like Google app that you can talk to it. Uh, there's so many, you know, if you're in some, find something in the web browser, like uh, it's pretty cool to search by talking on the phone. It works pretty well. Uh, a lot, of, of course, everybody that uses phones all the time knows about all this stuff. But uh, anyway, it's pretty neat. And there's other apps that'll do that. But I, since I like Linux, I pick that one, that KDE app. And so then you can send it to uh, you know you find a, a website that you want to you're interested in but you don't you can't read it on the phone it's too little that's only a four inch screen then uh, we'll send it to your web browser where you can look at it now I hadn't uh, tried that before until today I'd scan uh, barcodes a lot or that's not a barcode it's a it's those other ones the square ones just calls it a barcode though barcodes are usually the long skinny ones which there's one of those on there. Usually, there's another word, QR code. They call it QR code, and that's the name of the app that I used to do it with. It was QR Droid, I think. Yeah, QR Droid. That's pretty cool. It's a free Android app. So, it ha oh, when you get there on the page, then it has same uh, a lot. You know, I didn't click on any of these links, but. Uh, there's early voting information, all that, uh, election day information, training. This one would probably take me, like, if I did early voting in person, voting by mail. Well, I clicked on it. <laughs> Held down control to make it open up in a new uh, tab, but it just opened in the same one. Okay, so it's same information, but it is not the same page. So I don't know why they have it all spread out all over the place. This is my county, though. Um, lost my place for my links. I'm trying to put it in my bookmarks there, and uh, well, for one thing, it's not responding well. But there we go. <coughs> so yeah, this went straight to. My, so you know that would be good uh, to get right to your county. You know, if you're using your, if you have your voter registration card, then that'll take you straight to that. Take you to my county. I didn't have to go through all the other stuff I went through. I started. I've done this several times over the years, and so I went back to my bookmarks. And uh, of course, things change each year, so you always want to check in on everything. But that took me mailing address. Looks like it's got everything I needed to know right there on that one page. So, yeah, that's... I just had a feeling I would check into that. Of course, I did it last. Well, I was going to do it in the beginning, and I forgot. So, yeah, if you got your voter registration, definitely uh, use that QR code and, you know, some way or other, email it to yourself or use an app to get it in your computer where you can read it unless you can read your phone. And, uh, see, that was just too... Open up page, click a link, and you're there to what you need to know. <coughs> so that's much better than all the different six pages I had to go through to find it all. Of course, there's more detailed information on all those pages. And, uh, you know, if I put this up, I'm kind of hoping I'll get this, I'll ha edit this and put it up. Uh, and then I'll, on the descript video description uh, online and then on the video description, I'll put my links from all my, what I've been talking about. See, these are the ones from right here, and I have a bunch more of my older links, but I'll just put these ones that pertain to this year. So, there's the application blank. I still, uh, and of course I filled it out, and there's a, it, it makes two pages out of it, which if you had it mailed to you, that's the other option you can do, have it mailed to you, and then, uh, which I just sent mine in, uh, scanned it, and sent it as a PDF, but if you have it mailed to you, then, you would just f uh, fill this out, fold it up, has a sticky tab on it, and uh, put it in the mail. And they say in one of the pages, you know, if you uh, if you mail this in, uh, you, if you print out the PDF and then fill it out and mail it in, then you, you need to put it in an envelope. And 
I, I've actually done this before when I was out of envelopes. I folded a sheet of paper and turned it, <laughs> kind of turned it into an envelope. But you know, they could have changed regulations, and you know, something like that might hang up in the mailing machines, you know, or something. So I don't know if that's a great idea. But, but the reason I, I thought of doing that is because there it all is. You know, you, you, it's all you have to do is fill that out and fill that out. And you fold it over it, and then you got an envelope. But I don't know, just an idea. I don't know if that's a good idea. So, um, this is my uh, Crusader web uh, file uh, file manager that I like to use. And actually, left side is my uh, my old my my server. It used to be my main machine, but now it's my server. It was always always had it set up to serve files and uh, F SFTP and even web. Easy to build uh, practice b building my website. So, and here it is. This is the other machine. Uh, actually, I was going to just go ahead and scan it on this machine. This is a Fedora 23 Lenovo i5, and that's a, I call it the red black BioStar because it's black with red lights and uh, it has a BioStar motherboard. And it's a bunch of other parts of an old da gateway that got hit, I think it got, yeah, it got struck by a lightning surge. And the motherboard was bad, but everything else was good. So anyway. It's Fedora 14. I used it for years, and it was already set up for scanning. And my Fedora 23 turns out my scanner's too old. It's a HP 3970, I think. 3970 HP. It uh, the uh, dry uh, the software that was in that was in. You only plug in a HP printer or a scanner, and it just Fedora just finds it and installs it for you, but it didn't, and I thought, uh oh, and so I went and looked in the repos, and and then I ended up doing a whole bunch of reading, and and I found, an, <laughs> oddly enough, I found an app that said it would automatically find the right software for you know for, uh, but then I scanned it with Virus Total, and one it had one bad hit, one out of 68, and I thought, well, you know what, I don't want to mess with it because I know it'll work on my older machine, so. I just went over there on that machine and did it because I have a KVM switch where I can just switch back and forth. And so I went over there and did it and then uh, I went ahead and put the, uh, I didn't want to show you know my information on the scanned anyway on this video so I put I put this in the scanner and I uh, thought well I'll just show us quick in case uh, of course it would be a little different in Windows but just for the heck of it, I thought I'll show uh, my two favorite scanning apps, and uh, just in case anybody wanted to do this but didn't have a clue of how to scan. So if you got a scanner, put it in there. Um, of course, you have. If it's Windows, you got to install drivers that come with it. If it's Linux, you either it'll either find it and just say, "Do you want to install this?" and do it, say OK, or you may have to go to the YAM package manager. YAMX is what I use. And, uh, or whatever package manager, if you have a Debane distro, Synaptic is what I like. And find, you know, just search for it. Your, I search for HP 3970, and, and uh, I found, you know, everything HP in there. Actually, I, that didn't find anything. I, I searched for HP Scan, or Scanner. I did both. And that found everything that was available for HP Scanners and Printers, uh, usually combination software. But, um, it didn't. I put it on there and it didn't work, so I took it back off. I think I took it back off. No, I don't think I've taken it back off yet. I need to do that. Okay, so um, it just didn't recognize it's what happened. It didn't break anything or do anything. It, of course, if you uh, if you d you know you don't have a if you got an old scanner, <laughs> you might need to use an older version of of your. <coughs> operating system that might even be that would very likely be a problem in the newer I don't even know if it'll work on Windows 7 I don't think I've tried it <coughs> but be, be a usually it's more of a problem in Windows uh, you know things getting obsolete than it is in Linux get a little drink there okay so I've got it set up and this is in remote desktop VNC remote desktop so that's why the windows are a little odd with big borders I could make it full screen, but sometimes some of these apps are a little hard to get out of full screen, so I don't want to do it. It's already in there, and I tried. I started this uh, th list scanning uh, software. See, it uh, it shows a list of scanners, and actually, I hadn't paid any attention, and it was actually set on 3800. 
and I did two or three scans that way and I thought well maybe it'll be a little better if I set it on my scanner so I did just change the color the tint just a little bit is all it did and it actually always this this application is called acquire images and um, it always defaults to 600 dpi but that makes a really big file too big to email so uh, I kept going down in size I want it to be as high resolution as sharp as an image as it could be but still uh, maximum I can email with my email accounts 10 megabytes so so I ended up on uh, 200 dpi I didn't have to change any of this I mean you could but I didn't and I don't change you don't change really any of that and you can use preview but that takes more time so if you do use a preview I'll go ahead and do a preview because it'll show you the two things <coughs> But if you're just kind of in a hurry, then you can just skip the preview and it'll still work. It just won't let you crop it. And it's warm enough to scan her now. <coughs> and there it is. And if you use the preview, then you have to pay attention to the uh, where the crop marks are. Where are the crop marks? I can't even see them. Okay. Um, oops. There we go. Zoom to fit. Oh, zoom to selection or zoom to fit. Okay. So it must be selected. I think I just can't see it. So, the, but before, when I did it the first time, it actually a really odd thing is it had two selections. It had automatically selected the main document. It was cutting it really close. It was actually cutting off some of the writing, which is instructional stuff. But And then it had another little rectangular, and it kept saving two documents. And I didn't even know it would do that. So finally I clicked in there and realized, oh, I think I right-clicked on one of them. No, that didn't do it. Zoom to selection, zoom to fit. Either one does the same thing. So anyway, but if you don't do a preview, then it'll and just hit scan like that. Which maybe I haven't got anything selected. I'm not really sure. If it did it, I can't see. The, it was a red dotted line before. Usually it's either a red or a black dotted line that you can see. <coughs> of course, it'd be a little bit bigger if, if I wasn't run, running through VNC, but... Um, so, I already have a name, except for the last one, it wasn't Simple Skin, it's uh, A C, whoop, C Q I R E I M A D S. Let's see. I want to put, oh, page two, that's what I want. P two because it's not the back of it it's page two okay so and it defaults to going to your home directory home dawn for me and you can change it but oh that's what's in there's the last I must I copied the whole file name that's why it's different which is fine um, save it you can just move it because uh, if you I can, first time I saved it in my folder where I wanted it to be scanned images and it kept uh, I kept having to find that folder every time so finally I said well heck I can let it save and where it wants to and then I can just move it in Crusader so you gotta kinda wait because it'll take it a minute to uh, finish uh, it's still building even while you're talking there so it looks like it's done it's file size isn't growing anymore and uh, and this one, you know, you got some going this way and some going this way, so it won't help you much. To, yeah, it didn't do any cropping. See, it's got everything, including my backup piece of paper I had on there. It looks like I have it upside down. I can see the letters there. Don't remember doing that. <coughs> but um, that's why that red is showing through there. I guess I'll get over there and fix that. A and I, I like uh, Gwen View. Uh, image viewer that it just I set that as my default image viewer because uh, it's real good to work with it's, it's got simple but power you know enough stuff to do what you need to do so I hit crop 
And that's kind of turns out to be simple. You can see better what you're cropping and everything. Then cropping it before you. That previewing crop just takes more time. You got to you got to preview and then you got to scan it again. So if you with this app anyway, with this app you can uh, just scan, which I didn't do this time, and then just crop it in your image viewing app, image editing viewing. This is a viewer and uh, editor. So. Uh, and see, then it'll say to you, you know, it's got up there, do you want to save it? Do you want to undo it? So I'm going to save it. And uh, it's a little slower because I'm going through the BNC remote desktop. So, and you can v zoom in and stuff. And see, if you <laughs> if nothing else, you may need to scan this just to be able to read those instructions. See, now I can finally read the instructions on the paper that I've, on the PDF that I of course, I read them on the website, so and, and they weren't. It wasn't too hard to follow the uh, instruction, you know, the the deals on the page. But if I hadn't read some instructions, then I would have been a little bit lost. So uh, this is just for me, you know. I'm not sending it to anybody or anything. It's really not too bad. I can see that red tint from. I don't know how that. I must have got mixed up. So I'm going to move it. Click on it. Move. Now I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to close this app and open Simple Scan. That's the other one that's real good. And it, that one saves as a ping and it doesn't look like you can uh, type PNG image. And this and it doesn't look like you can change that. And this other one, Simple Scan, it saves as a JPEG. So JPEGs are kind of more... I was kind of thought, well, what if they don't even have, don't know how to open up a ping image? You know, if they don't have an app, let it open it up. They should, but JPEG is more common. It, almost all cameras use them, you know. So, so I thought, well, I'm going to do JPEG, JPG. Now let me go check that. Yeah, I got in there. I, well, I picked it up. I don't know when I did it, but at some point, I put my. I have a. I said that earlier in this video. I have a uh, piece of cardboard, thin cardboard or thick paper. You know, it's a, it was a big envelope an advertisement that came in it, and you know, one side it has print on it, and the I guess you'd call it a cardboard envelope, and the other one is you know Manila, almost white, and so it, it's good to when you scan on it with with it sitting on top of a piece of paper then the scan won't go all the way through and say if you have letters on the other side it seems to reduce that too but with my particular scanner that 3970 it has a a, a um, photo negative you know yeah film negative scanner film negative scanner and see this I got this uh, before digital cameras were, you know, had really were a big deal. They, I don't know, they were just coming out, really, I mean, for consumers to use. And, uh, it, uh, although it's not all that old, but I guess it's, I guess it's about 15 years old, maybe, not quite. So anyway, <coughs> um, still works great. <coughs> so that, um, but that negative scanner would make a real bad shadow on almost every scan. And so I put that, I, I cut that paper and I've kept it ever since, and that solved that problem. So I hit scan, and uh, this one, there's not really any settings to set in it. There, I mean, you can, I think you can set a few things. Should have showed that first, but uh, I got to thinking, I'm just jabbering here. Could have, could have hit that button at the beginning and jabbered it then. But I don't want to hit any other things while it's scanning, but that's what it. There it is. It just makes that silly little anima animation while it scans. It's um, simple, a lot simpler to use, but it doesn't have as many, um, you know, it's not controllable. It doesn't have as many features. There's times when you really need to 
be able to set all you know the brightness like if you're scanning something that's hard to scan and uh, you might need to set all the different things of brightness and the hue and all that stuff or so I mean you could scan objects too you know I used sometimes I would set something on the scanner and of course that flat lid won't sit down on it but you can throw a, a white towel over it or or a colored one or whatever because whatever you put up there is going to scan the, scan it so usually like a light colored towel white towel or beige towel will make what your skin is show up best <coughs> But uh, this one, it's good to go ahead and uh, crop. It's got a crop and a rotate built in right up here. So you hit crop, and it'll and it'll try to p figure it out for you, but it's not ever right. So you got to grab those edges. Maybe a little tricky to do with a remote desktop. Um, there, that one got it. You just have to hit it right on the money there. On the oh, reg, oh, if you're you're not doing remote desktop, it's not really a problem. Your mouse kind of lags. There you go. Now I got it, and I don't want it like that far over. I think I was actually going the wrong way from what I meant to do. See, you're, you're, you can see when you move sometimes the tiny little mouse that's hanging behind the bigger one, that's the one that's doing the actual locating, so they're not exactly right on top of each other. I wonder if there's a setting you can set to turn off the big one in the front. That would help, wouldn't it? So, if I can get that bottom one, I'll, be, I'll have it. There. Oops, going too far. Okay, that's close enough. Alright, so I hit save. And... Don't really need scan document on the end of it. That was the name of the last one I did with simple scan. Let's see. Oh yeah, page two. Simple scan app. There we go. Now, and that one is really kind of quicker to use. But as far as, see, you've got documents, save as, you could email it, page, rotate. So, you know, there is no, yeah, there's no settings, no pre scan settings. So, you know, if it works good, you know, use it. But, uh, but if it doesn't uh, get what you're looking for, then you might want to use something else. There's another one in here, uh, image scan for Linux that. I don't know if it works with this scanner at all. I'm not even going to try it. I, ha I put it on there to use. Uh, my mom had another scanner. She had a different brand. And you had to, that was the only one that would work with it. And uh, But it was a network. You could use it over the network. Uh, I think it was a brother. Yeah, it was a brother. And uh, so that was why that was on there. So, um, yeah, and this one, it remembers the last save, I believe it remembers the last folder you put it in, is what it does, because it, it went straight into my scanned images folder. And so it'll be a little bit different color, and a little less sharp, because, <coughs> <coughs> but the file, <coughs> <coughs> hang on. <coughs> 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 Can't move my head far enough to get away from the mic. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the way I'm sitting here. Uh, darn it. Okay, so um Oh well, that's the, what I said I didn't want to show. My actual application. <coughs> I just have all that seriously personal information, but it does have some in there. <coughs> okay, so I was going to show the other one. Oh, okay. That one is going up and down, and the other one's sideways. And I didn't rotate either one from what I remember. <coughs> That's the other thing about it, is they do differently in that. But uh, they're pretty similar. 
but it seems a little less uh, sharp in the words. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. If you <coughs> wanted to be able to read those. <coughs> 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 Hang on. If you wanted to be able to read those instructions, then you could you could rotate it and save it rotated. But I think I'm going to leave them like they are. One is one way, and the other one's the other. But you can, uh, of course, after you zoom in a whole lot, you can still would be able to read that. Uh, that's what I like about Gwenview. You can do all those things real quickly and easily. <coughs> oh, it remembers the way you left it. And this one... Yeah, it's not... Yeah, I think it's a little sharper. It's a, kind of a mix because there's all those lines. It's, it it kind of made the lines in the paper show up more. So that's why I'm kind of showing two different applications because depends on uh, what you want and what you need and what you prefer as to what you might want to use. <coughs> and people are more familiar, you know, with uh, Windows apps, so it's, uh, I'll show the Linux ones. <coughs> so there it is, and that's definitely. I mean it. Since I had to go around and around to get my scanning working, I don't scan much anymore. Don't do paper stuff much anymore. Then it took me a long time, but if I wouldn't have had to go around and around, then, you know, it would have been quicker, would have been quick, would have, could have been quicker and easier than mailing it. Of course, if you, if I'd have filled it out, put an envelope and slapped a stamp on it, and put it out in the mailbox, and I'd have been done a lot quicker this time. But, uh, I don't, uh, again, I don't think, uh, I've printed this out, of course, you, in order to sign it, and then you need to print it out so you can sign it and scan it, you know, uh, <coughs> if it was a fill-in uh, Adobe form, then you need to open it with Adobe, the R Adobe brand application, I used O'Caller, I don't think it's a fill-in form anyway, but uh, it's not a big deal to just handwrite that small amount of stuff in there, you know, and uh, and you can with uh, well you'd have to convert it I guess there are some scanning apps that will actually save the file as a PDF and some those apps that I was using there uh, oh yeah I wanted to copy those over to my thing those apps that I was using there they they may just obey whatever uh, I spent a long time since I scanned so they I know some there was one or two apps I had at least one or whatever uh, fi uh, file extension you gave it, it would just work with that, you know. And not, instead of having to set it in the program saying this is what it, it's going to save as, you know. But uh, this is back in my machine in Crusader and over the network here. So I'm going to see what we got here. I think uh, it doesn't doesn't always always go back out of the directory and back in to make sure it's refreshed. You can hit a refresh button up here somewhere, but but look at the uh, <coughs> these are all the ones I did today. I started out with 40.2 megabytes at 600 DPI, and then at 300 DPI it was 10.9, still a little bit too big to email, and then uh, 200 DPI it was 5.4, 5.7. Uh, and then the uh, simple scan is 1.2, so it's a lot smaller. So that's the other reason why I uh, went that way with it. <coughs> and uh, can't remember for sure which. Well, page two is the only ones I, I want out of these. I may delete those others. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Copy them over to this machine, so I'll have them. I can look at them without having to boot up my. I could say it's a server, but I don't backup server, but I don't have it on all the time because it makes too much heat and noise. Uh, so it's a intermittent backup server. So there's my uh, experience with voting by mail in Texas or uh, 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 applying 
for voting by mail. I'm not voting yet. They'll send you the ballot when it's time to vote. And the key, uh, uh, there's all these timelines of when you can apply, when you can send it in, when you have to send it in by. But the key of uh, <coughs> that I found to this right here that makes it a lot e uh, easier on that respect is, uh, let's see. Okay, let me see. Oh, here's something that tells you just what I was talking about. <coughs> Applications for... I'm going to have to drink again. <coughs> uh, sorry, my room is... My house is dusty. And whenever I have to dig around into things, getting stuff out like this... Uh, breathe a bunch of dust and it messes with me all day long. <coughs> okay, applications may use the. What happened? Okay. Applications for a ballot by mail may be submitted through out the calendar year beginning January 1 and must be received by our office no later than the close of business on the 11th day before the day, election day. And I'm not going to read the rest of that because the <coughs> voice is failing me anyway. Uh, so yeah, this uh, yeah, I <laughs> I'd save myself a lot of time if um, you know, of course I probably wouldn't have known all the things I know, and I wouldn't have known if I knew everything I needed to know. But this uh, if you if you use your, uh, your QR code scanner on your phone, take you to the that the right page, the the best page I would say then you know this one this is the one for Tarrant County Texas where I live then uh, I clicked on early voting early voting by mail and that's how I got to that page of course there's all a lot more information in there but that's how I got to that page it's really quick and all, all that information that I found on so many different pages is all put right there and it's just and this is for my area, you know. So yeah, that was that's actually one of the first times I've seen. Usually, when you scan a QR code, you just go to like the home page or whatever side it is, and you know, you still just on your own. You're, you're going to do some reading to find what you're really looking for. But that actually worked and worked well. So uh, <coughs> if you don't know what a QR code scanner is or anything, then uh, look that up and you're like if you have Android go to Google Play and, and search for QR code scanner or barcode scanner might find it just as well with barcode code scanner and then uh, you know I mean it's pretty cool being able to send it over to your uh, desktop but you don't have to if you can read on your phone you can just read it up read it that way but anyway uh, this is Don and that's <coughs> my fun day of Printing a PDF, uh, printing my voting by mail PDF out, <laughs> scanning it and sending it back. And I just sent mine. Of course, I did that at the beginning there. Sent mine by email, but you can mail. You can do it all in the mail too. Then, oh, and there are numbers, phone numbers. <coughs> Let's see, right here. Well, there's a fax number here. You can fax it too. Uh, one of those other pages. Let's see. Is on this one. One of these other pages had, uh, of course, there's a phone number right there on my local my local phone number. So if you go to that contact page from this one, this uh, so West State page, um, you, could, you just have to. I guess if you wanted to go there, you'd have to just get that off the out of the video here. Well, I, uh, if I upload this, I will put it in the description. But right there, contact page. That's how you, I got to that list of all Texas voting elections and administrators so there's a phone number there but there was also an uh, you know an 800 number uh, that you could call on one of the pages at the beginning of one of those pages I uh, saw so, so uh, yeah this one's for this area this particular page this is Tarrant County <coughs> so uh, all right it's done and uh, there's my my fun day. Okay, bye-bye.